this flipping in North Carolina, right? Because like North Carolina is a southern state, right? And it's got great weather and it's got huge population increases, right? So the cool thing with you flipping houses in North Carolina, and I don't think that you should ever stop doing that because you've already done the hardest part, bro. You've you've put together the pieces that allow you yeah. to, to replicate it over and over. And when you're in North Carolina, uh, you're in an area where if, if you make a mistake, I think you're going to get bailed out, right? Because uh, the prices just are always going to climb. Now, as you're obviously aware, right, uh, the market has been like shooting like this. So I'm assuming you made like hella profit on some of these, but now you're smart enough to realize like the Fed started messing with the rates. So we're kind of coming down. But even so, North Carolina, like 30 years from now, is going to have way more people than it's got today. So that's like a really good market to flip in. And if you've already like essentially built the railroad tracks, you just got to keep driving the train over it. So I would assume that that nothing has fallen out with your team down there and you're still able to continue that process, right? Yes. Yeah, actually, this is in Charlotte, like Northeast Charlotte, uh, uh, Canapolis, uh, Cabarrus County. So it's it's a good market. The thing is, like the thing for me is, I, and we've done probably, I don't know, the past three years, I don't know, like like seventeen, a good number. So I have a. a They're averaging like agent. five or six a year. Yeah, a real estate agent there. I and have how many? A, how much? Like, crew. what's your average profit on those? Um, so 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 some I've done all cash, some I've done hard money. Uh, I'm netting probably like like twenty five thousand. These are these are. 100 and something to uh, from 150 to 270 these last one that we sold um uh, um uh arv that's that's what we're selling for so we're doing anything from 15 to 20s 30s uh, in profit depending on the house so you're pulling down about 100 125 grand a year for the last three years on average yeah <laughs> all right my man Patricio, what's up, dog? Welcome to the show. What can, uh, what, what brings you to my uh, little corner of the internet today, brother? Hey, man, happy to be here. Um, so, actually, I've been following. I mean, I've been following you for for a couple of years. I know all of your shows and and the whole thing. Perfect. Um, Thank you. I appreciate that. Were you so feeling I... the shirtless blue genie? <laughs> what? Were you feeling my show when I was shirtless, painted blue as a genie? No, uh, well, b- man, b- that's back probably what, a couple of years ago. Uh, maybe like six months, no. eight months, maybe uh, a year, uh, maybe a year. Yeah. Then, then yeah, but yeah, I've been following you for for a while, and uh, I'm actually I'm actually in in Cleveland. I'm moving out now. Now that I'm moving out, I I uh, I thought, man, I can't I can't leave town without uh, talking to you and and uh and getting getting your your opinion on 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 my situation right here okay so, uh, all right so i've been doing so i've been doing uh i don't own any rental property i've been doing for the past two years flips mostly okay uh in, in cleveland no uh in uh north carolina okay uh covers covers county 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 i have a I have somebody there that I've had a relationship with that we've done uh, a number of successful deals, but uh, with everything happening. So I've been, of course, following your stuff, thinking about, man, I really should be doing BRRs. I really should look into Section 8. I really should be building a portfolio, but just not doing it because now what I realized, I think, is um, I think what I have what I've done wrong is really go after. I've been trying to go after like the returns and the flips and and really not building the, those assets. So um, okay. so so right now with the whole situation, I actually sold one last property. Um, man, right before right before uh, the Fed started started hiking rates, and I got out, out out of that one with a with a good profit. And I decided I'm just not gonna do that anymore. I don't right. It's like I don't want to get into that. Uh, I feel now is the time for me to start uh, going after building a a a, uh, a cash flow and start start accumulating assets. So um, so I started looking again at your channel, looking at the deals that you're getting out there. But I felt I wanted to to just talk about um talk about 
how to do it. And right, I, I just I didn't want to just buy one house and and just have it sit there and see what happens next. And so I, I'd rather just uh, have a conversation about and just tell you the whole situation. And of course, like hear from your from from your experience and 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 kind of work out at least in my head work out a plan on on, on how to 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 get started and then how this is going to scale and how to how to get to those uh to to the to that cash flow at least where it's something meaningful for me right where it's probably where where it's starting to get interesting for me would be i don't know four or five k um free cash a month that probably means uh, 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 a, a more than a decent investment. I have some cash now. I have great credit. I think I have all the, 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 the pieces. I just don't know how to put them together. And that's why I want to talk to you. I know you guys. I mean, you, you do everything uh, from, from finding deals to rehabs to managing. And that's what I'm interested on. And just last thing, since I'm probably going to be moving out of, of Cleveland at least for a couple of years, uh, for work, uh, man, I want to keep something here, have something here and have it just producing. Sure. All right, cool. Uh, I just kind of want to go through like a whole bunch of stuff. There's a lot of time yeah. packed there. And, uh, the first thing that caught my attention was the flipping in North Carolina. And, um, this might be like a swerve from like what people expect somebody like me to say, uh, and you know, that I look at it like in its entirety, right? Your entire yep. uh, portfolio, right? Like, cause you know, I mean, I don't actually really care about real estate like itself isn't like, oh man, this is a great porch. Look at the architecture. Like who gives a fuck, right? We're just here cause these are investment vehicles, right? So like real estate yep. to me, if I thought I could make the same money fucking flipping baseball caps that I do flipping houses or whatnot, right? I'd be doing that. It's 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 irrelevant, right? And another thing to that is like I'm based in the Cleveland market, Holton Wise, you know, we make, you know, a large majority of our money uh transacting deals in Cleveland. And mm. usually when you you deal with like promoters or people like that, I feel like they oftentimes like just always just try to like regurgitate information that makes their market seem like it's like so great and other markets are you know less superior to it right like you know stuff like that right so the first thing i want to mention is this flipping in north carolina right because like north carolina is a southern state right and it's got great weather and it's got huge population increases right so the cool thing with you flipping houses in north carolina and i don't think that you should ever stop doing that because you've already done the hardest part bro you've you've put together the pieces that allow you to, yeah. to replicate it over and over. And when you're in North Carolina, uh, you're in an area where if, if you make a mistake, I think you're going to get bailed out, right? Because uh, the prices just are always going to climb. Now, as you're obviously aware, right? Uh, the market has been like shooting like this. So I'm assuming you made like hella profit on some of these, but now you're smart enough to realize like the Fed started messing with the rates. So we're kind of coming down. But even so, North Carolina, like, 30 years from now is going to have way more people than it's got today. So that's like a really good market to flip in. And if you've already like essentially built the railroad tracks, you just got to keep driving the train over it. So I would assume that nothing has fallen out with your team down there and you're still able to continue that process. Right. Yes. Yeah. Actually okay. this is in Charlotte, like Northeast Charlotte, yeah. uh, uh, Canapolis, uh, Cabarrus County. So it's a, it's a good market. The thing is, like the thing for me is, I, and we've done probably I don't know the past three years, I don't know, like like seventeen, a good number. So I have a, a they're averaging like agent. five or six a year. Yeah, real estate agent there. I and have how many? A, how much? Like, crew. what's your average profit on those? Um, so 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 some I've done all cash, some I've done hard money. Uh, I'm netting probably like like twenty five thousand. These are these are. 100 and something to uh, from 150 to 270 these last one that we sold um uh, um uh arv that's that's what we're selling for so we're doing anything from 15 to 20s 30s uh, in profit depending on the house so you're pulling down about 100 125 grand a year for the last three years on average yeah okay. but right now so my my fear right now was well i would assume that will go down a little bit right now of course, and the and the and the just the the lead times right between it's it's everything going up. It's taking longer to 
to to sell. Uh, I think I got out. The, I I sold the last one we did probably like two uh, less than two months ago. But so it was. I took the first offer that came in and just get out of that, get out of there with with profit. It was great. And my fear is I I don't know. So even though I've done I've been doing deals there, I don't really do anything. So it's completely hands off. I don't know the market. I've never lived there, or been there lo longer than than four days, and uh, I don't know what's gonna happen. Right. So I I so what I so what my my thought process was, well, I've do, I've done well doing those flips and just going after those returns. Uh, and, and I have two two little girls. My second one just was just born two months ago. Congrats. Um, yeah, thanks. And so I started thinking, like, is this the, the reasonable uh, financial smart thing to be doing or should I be building a portfolio of rentals? Not be not not uh, not be as uh, as maybe I don't know, as um ambitious with like getting those returns and and trying to get hard money and try try to increase that ROI should i be building my portfolio and just going after cash flow and <clears throat> and build more slowly that that was my, what i was thinking i was like man maybe maybe that should my, maybe that would be smarter and and that's okay. why i thought of of you guys how much uh like do you do you make at your day job like are you what do you what do you do so i am a e-commerce i have i own my my own company um so between between what I pay myself and and profits, I'd say I'm making between around four hundred k a year, more or less, more, a little more. Where are you moving? Uh, I'm uh, right now. We're between because we're we're online. We can go wherever. Uh, I want Colorado. My wife wants wants uh, Florida. Uh, we want to try an, on another place. Uh, I'm from Mexico. My wife from Argentina. So we want to be somewhere close, it's closer uh, for people to come visit. So we want to try probably a couple of years while our girls grow up, maybe two, three years. We definitely want them to live here, uh, to grow up here. We want to raise our family here. So we want to be, we'll, we'll be here. We, that's why I'm, I'm, I want to keep something here. Uh, we'll definitely come back. But, uh, but yeah, in the meantime, we'll probably try a couple of different places. Okay. All right. Um, so this, these are my... These are my initial thoughts on like what I think would make sense for you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so like right now, obviously you're making 400 from your job and you're bringing yep. in an average of 100 and a quarter, we'll call it, for the last three years. So for the last three years, uh, you've been pulling in a little over half a mil and you're currently uh, living in the Cleveland area. So you're obviously stacking cash. You're living like a king because yeah. that's a pretty large income. That's one of the Cleveland problems. Area. There's nobody, there's no, there's nowhere else we can go. It's, it's near, even remotely close to what we are uh, spending here and we did, uh, we love it here it's like great great place well so, that's yeah. why i asked right because if you're like yeah i'm moving to san francisco it's like oh yeah. okay so like right now you just have piles and piles of cash but now you're moving to san francisco <laughs> and now it's like you might as well be a mcdonald's cashier in san yeah, francisco exactly. only no. making 550 okay yeah, but no. you know there's places in florida obviously going to be more expensive than here of course mm -hmm. but like you could still get relative like you're not moving to a place like San Fran, right? I guess that's no. like the main thing no. I wanted to know. This is what I would do, right? If you're, if you're, I would look to to continue being totally diversified, right? Like I know a lot of people, uh, th they see like the Holton Wise thing, and you know we own a ton of rentals, but we do the brokerage, we do the insurance, mm -hmm. we do the show, we do all this stuff, right? So my biggest thing is, is to be diversified and spread out and you know, get as many streams of that income coming in all, all through the real estate vehicle. Cause that's just what I'm in, you know, what I'm good at and what has worked and what we've, we've built those railroad tracks to them. But like I said, to me, it's just an investment vehicle and mm -hmm. it happens to be the investment vehicle that I have a skill set in. Right. But like, uh, if I had a skill set in something else, I would be, you know, uh, trying to work to vertically integrate that business, but this is the business I've already vertically integrated. So this is where, I stay, but I try to get as many different forms of income coming in. And I feel like you've done some hard parts uh, of uh, your business that uh, a lot of people will never get to do and will never achieve, right? So like the out-of-state flipping thing, like I think you're right on the money with your thoughts on that, uh, but you just need to understand how impressive that is to be able to, for the last three years, passively pull in six figures. That's awesome. But I do agree with you. Uh, that it's going to slow down. You're probably not going to find uh, as many hot deals and you probably will be squeezed a little bit on your resale because people are not just beating each other up to take any house, right? 
Uh, so what I would do, I would never stop that, but what I would do is I would probably stop utilizing hard money loans, right? Because now with the interest rates being higher, and you told me you're selling to people like somewhere in like the 200-ish ARV, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like that's a, a a portion like resale value of buyers that are are, are definitely – uh, they're going to be very price sensitive, right? And as the rates go up, their affordability goes way, way down, right? So I think the margins are going to get squeezed and you're going to need to perhaps instead of doing like six deals a year, you might end up doing like three or so, right? But if you can remove all the hard money lenders, you know, those three deals will open up for you, right? Because you're going to achieve more profit per deal because you don't got to pay for them. And then just based on, how much you're making doing that plus uh, from the e-commerce thing and where you're currently living, I assume you probably have enough cash uh, to roll those cash like three to four a year without needing to pay for money, correct? Yeah, correct. So I would continue to correct. do that, right? You've already. I mean, I would still do do it uh, with traditional loan, right? I mean, that, not a that, flip. That's no, a just do a cash. No, 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 no flips. The other, yeah, I agree. Yeah, uh, no, flip. those flips, right? Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. talking this. I'm looking at your business yeah. as a, a piece. We'll get to what to do with the the rentals in a second. But so my thinking was, well, what if? So yeah, I don't want you to turn right. one spigot yeah. off just to open another, dude. Keep them both and rolling, that's what I was but like, yeah. you know, they both don't need to be full, right? Like you're making coin. I just think you should yeah, slow that down, right? I, I wouldn't pay for that money. Why? You're getting it in and out in probably eight months or less, right? Yeah, this last one. So this last one scared me a little bit because it took lo took longer. It was was probably a little over nine months. We were usually just in and out completely in five months. But how four, much did you pay for the money on months. that deal? Uh, it was like 12%. 12% but it was um it was um paid all at the at, at the end so it really never hurt me because well, i was not making any pay? payments so like, it was totality. so it was 12 percent. i i don't even know how much we, I, I was paying honestly i was just getting the, the getting the well you probably paid like 20k for your money at least right I think less. Well, this this last one was expensive because it took longer than I thought. Yeah, it usually <laughs> doesn't even doesn't even. I don't, I don't even. Well, like, you can always get out of a deal quicker if you're able to lower the sales price. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if you're not paying for that money, you know, you could always get out uh, of a deal. We had all sorts of problems. They had to dig a well and uh, like, sure. like like rehab on 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 the rehab. That's why I I, mean, I took the first offer that came in a little right. like five k. But the moral under... of the story mm -hmm. is right. Yeah. If you get into a deal. Right. If you get into a deal and you're not paying for the money, right? Uh, you don't care. Your, well, your cost of the deal goes down, mm -hmm. right? Your your spread becomes wider. And if you're trying to flip houses and you're trying to scale up your house flipping business, right? There's like two reasons you're gonna want money from someone else. You're gonna only gonna pay for money to flip houses for two reasons. One, you don't have any. Two, you're trying to scale and do so many houses where it makes sense because you could do like 30 deals versus 10 deals if you're using someone else's yeah. money. But both of those scenarios don't apply to you because we've established you got some money so you can bankroll your deals, number one. Number two, you already want to slow it down. You're thinking about possibly turning the tap off. So I would stop paying for money in North Carolina, slow yeah. it down, only do cash deals, but keep that thing rolling. Keep those uh, relationships going. Keep those people still working for you. Right. Maybe you start making the same amount of money doing like three to four of those a year. So that's what I would I would continue to do that because dude, you're, you're you're killing it. That's a great business. Don't shut that business down. Just go less risky with that business. Mm. Don't pay for that money. Then that brings us to Cleveland. Right. And mm. now you're looking at things like, OK, I got my e-commerce going. That's a great business. Not going to stop that. That's four. Maybe making 80 to 100 now because I slowed down my flipping because the market's slower, but the opportunities are still there. And again, it's North Carolina, bro. That's a market that's going to go up, right? You don't yeah. have what you have in Cleveland. Let's be honest about Cleveland, though, right? There is going to be less people living in Ohio in 20 years than currently live here. Where the fuck are some of those people going to go? They're going to go to North know, Carolina. Man. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. There will be, brother. It's It's... Especially Northeast Ohio, if you, you just look so? at the data, well, there's going to be less people. Yeah, there will be less people. All right. 
there will be more people in Florida than there are today. There will be yeah. more people in North Carolina. The data has showed us that for the last like 50 years. Uh, I think a lot of people overblow a lot of that, but uh, the population drain is real in the Midwest. And, you know, when you get to the sunshine states, it goes higher. So mm -hmm. my opinion, you picked a good market to do that. You should never turn that off, slow that down. But that doesn't mean like, oh, don't invest in Northeast Ohio because population, there's a lot of money to be made there too. Let's just spread them out. So now I'm thinking you got your cash over there. You're doing your e-commerce, right? You're still pulling in about half a mil between those two. And now let's mm -hmm. talk rentals in Cleveland, right? That's the thing too, right? Every rental you buy in Cleveland, right? It's going to take you multiple years to recoup your money, right? So this is more of like a long-term, a retirement play type deal, right? So, yeah. you know, essentially the profits you're making flipping the houses then could then fund your down payments, right? So you got mm -hmm. your short-term and your long-term play, right? Like your, your flips make money in the short term. In the short term, all of your rentals lose money, right? Every single rental you buy, you buy a rental, you've lost more money than you could ever possibly make on that rental in that first year, right? Yeah. So if you could, you know, respect, you know, over the long haul, you get it all back and more, right? But like, if you buy a hundred thousand dollar rental, and then you put down twenty five percent, you're not going to bring home twenty five thousand yeah. dollars, right? You're probably only going to bring home like five or less, right? Probably mm -hmm. more along the lines of two or three, right? So how many mm -hmm. years does that take to recoup that, right? So I would allow that flipping business uh, and take that fund and then funnel that in. Right, funnel that into the long term rentals, right? That's what I would do. I can do that. Yeah. That that's that's my thought, right? And since you're not paying for money, your odds of losing on a flip much lower. And then when you're doing your rentals in Cleveland, your odds of screwing that up are pretty low, right? Because we're going to be using traditional financing most likely. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. almost impossible uh to to drastically overpay for a deal when you're doing traditional financing, right? I mean, that's, mm -hmm. it's pretty much impossible, right? Cause you're putting in a quarter, the bank's putting in three quarters and you know, they're not going to let you screw up their yeah, money and they got you. more on the line yeah. than you. Yeah. So that, that's what I would do with your entire business in its entirety. If uh, that makes sense uh, to you, I think that's a great plan. And now I think what we should do is possibly talk like more specifics on mm -hmm. what you want to do in cleveland like with these rentals like what i'm sure you have questions on like what i think would like make the most sense or like yeah. let's get into some details on like what types of rentals yeah. you should be building in this portfolio yeah so i'm a, i'm i'm on the on the west side i like okay. that you focus mainly on on, on well i don't know if mainly but i've, I've the, the things i've 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 like i've liked that i've seen in your so in your show are, are on, on this side uh so i think i feel comfortable enough now to say okay uh i know that i know that i don't know every neighborhood even though i've gone through your guide a, a number of times uh but uh but i feel comfortable with starting to put money for the long term here now the single family scare me uh man just like just one thing that can go like you need to fix one big thing or something broke or something then and that go, there goes your whole year okay uh a profit there so so single families scared me a little bit, unless like, and again, just thinking from where I am, from my standpoint, what do I know, right? Like, I'm not going to be managing these single families. Maybe you, that's why it's important for me to talk to you. It's like, well, maybe right. you see an angle there that I'm not seeing. So that's one thing. Um, and now, like you said, I think what I was thinking is, well, maybe I'll just take all the money from North Carolina, just put it here and buy some like, and start with something like decent couple multi couple i don't know multi units or 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 uh or, or fourplex or i don't know right so, so i was thinking on moving all all there to here but you're right doesn't make sense i'll, I'll do that bro no yeah you I'll can't be, no. i forbid Prime you dude yeah and like, I, bro, I just... i'm primed to be the guy that would make the most possible money in that scenario right course, like you're, you're talking to but me you're on my sense. show you're right. right? If you take yeah. all that money, invest in Cleveland, obviously you're going to want the brokerage renovation, all the services I provide. Everything. Dude, Everything. I'd be, I'd be getting fat off of you, being a king off of you with all that funding. Don't do it. It just, doesn't it make wouldn't sense. make sense. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Now, now that you said it, well, yeah, it doesn't make sense. So, uh, so, and again, just, um, cause like, dude, gonna... I'll be honest with you, bro. You know how mm -hmm. hard, you know how hard it would be just like that. To, 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 to get yourself to the point where your passive buy and hold business is making you 125 a year, right? 
that dude, it would, that would be like an enormous amount of freaking real estate you'd have to own an enormous amount of real estate you'd have to buy. Right. Like, yeah, don't like you you really, I feel like are not giving yourself enough credit for what you've been able to accomplish the last no, three years. I lost a ton of money uh, setting up, finding uh, the right crew and the right guy. And yeah, I, uh, my, I, I was, you put I, the blood was, and the sweat in that you yeah. not, drive the train over the tracks you built brother. Again, just, you're right. The market's catering a little bit. So right. don't pay for the money. Slow it down. That's, don't stop that's... it, but just slow it down. And again, that's North Carolina. That market will bail you out. I guarantee yeah. there will be more people living in North Carolina. I know that a decent chunk about North Carolina, by the way. My uncle lives in North Carolina. Uh, my uncle, like, uh, like 25 years ago, dude, bought a lot of acreage in an area that was like, there's like nothing, dude. Like when I, we used to go down there as kids, like, uh, bro, I'm talking like miles and miles and miles till you get into town. And now, dude, it's just like subdevelopments everywhere. Okay. So like I've had firsthand experience over the last like 25 years watching a place like that glow. Now, obviously that's like a super like micro viewpoint of it. Right. Like that's just mm. antidotal type evidence, but like, first person real life anecdotal evidence of what's going on down there and then like actually looking at the population trends like they you yeah. know it proves no, it, it makes sense yeah i agree with you so I like agree. that's like a super good market i'm high like i'm not ever gonna be like yo is cleveland is so much better than everywhere else like that would be dumb dude there's a whole country right and in your case you're from mexico right so you've probably got dealings internationally yeah. there, there mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of places to make money man uh, Cleveland's just one of them, right? So, uh, assuming you're down with that idea and you're still still making that coin, yeah. And, and you're asking me now, like, what makes more sense, like single family versus multi-family? You like the West I Side? I heard you say, way. I heard you say, I heard you say that, uh, and I don't remember if it was triplex or or fourplex that you can still finance with with a traditional loan. Yes, and that that's like your sweet spot. Uh, I love that. That's that's maybe what I was thinking of. Not 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 too many doors, right? Not single families either. Try to start building a portfolio of of, of tries and four fourplex and and just move around around those. There's if there's a six unit or eight unit that makes sense, a good deal. I saw one that you that uh, that you showed a couple probably weeks ago, uh, like row houses, like townhomes. Yeah, I, I like that one. Um, so so I mean again uh just I think I think the smart thing uh, it would be smart for us to start building a portfolio of those type of properties I like I love Airbnbs uh I I've uh, I've owned Airbnb my brother in Cancun in Rivier I'm from Cancun in Mexico so okay. my brother um uh, he owns Airbnbs and has a, a a management property company down there so I know I I'm very familiar with the business I feel very very comfortable uh with and are you invested model. in that too are you doing those as well yeah, yeah okay. with that model so i heard you uh also um do some some jvs or partnerships for for those type of, of properties i'd love so i'm open to, i'm open to that as well um i've been looking uh, for uh, i've been looking at apartments and other things here in in the in the cleveland area for airbnbs but again it's like I, I like the idea, but I don't want, but, but then I don't have all the rest that you do have, like for the management right. and all that. So I don't want to get into that on my own, especially if I'm going to leave town. Well, where uh, we've so been, I'd okay. be open to that too. Mm -hmm. Well, where we we have been like most successful with the Airbnbs in Cleveland. Right. And it's, it's going to be like a totally different model, right. Than what your brother's doing yeah. down there in Cancun. Right. Like yeah. you guys, your primary customer's on vacation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Like where is like what we're doing. Right. Like I don't, I don't really like uh, multifamilies in Cleveland for Airbnb. Okay, mm -hmm. like they're smaller, and you're you're kind of close to uh, essentially what a hotel is providing, right? At that point, uh, where we are seeing the biggest uh, successes in our Cleveland Airbnbs is we're hitting up like larger homes, like big homes, like 2,500 square feet, and we are getting a lot of people that come and they want to stay for 20 days. 30 days, 60 days, mm -hmm. stuff like that, two months, three months. And they're like, they're getting moved, right? Uh, you know, they're, they're being transferred. A lot of people in healthcare, right? Because we got all the good healthcare yeah. stuff. So they're being, they're being transferred for their job. So they get themselves set up. 
maybe one, two, three month Airbnb stay. They don't have to invest any money in furniture. They can kind of figure out what's going on and then figure out where they want to live. Like that's kind of like the sweet swap we're hitting. And like they're attracted to like nice larger homes, right? For that process. So yeah. it's like totally different thinking about it here versus like Cancun where it's like, okay, these people are going to be on vacation. Completely understand that. I've been looking into Bay, Bay Village in Westlake for that because actually I'm, I'm, I'm here in Bay. Uh, okay. so super uh, nice area, but you got to watch out for the regulations in the suburbs though. That, okay. That that's the thing. So every time, so, uh, I have a, we have a ton of family always coming, coming here. Not every, not, 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 not all of them can stay here at the house. So, uh, we, we do quite, we, we do that quite a bit, uh, rent for longer term, uh, Airbnb is here. So I know it's, uh, I mean, the numbers look good. Um, uh, so, so that's something that I'm definitely open, open yeah. to doing. The thing, the thing with the suburbs, a lot of the suburbs, right? Uh, in, in Bay, it may already be Tough. illegal yeah. in Bay. Um, Less than 30 days, yeah. If it's not, right, they're always changing it, right? Like, I mean, freaking J.R. Smith had that, that – J.R. Smith lived in a house. I don't remember if it was Westlake or Bay. It's, like, right there, right? Like, right on the border. Mm -hmm. and like, uh, after he moved out of his house – there's like some huge party. And then after that, like, you know, these are mm -hmm. towns that are so yeah. small that like one thing, it's like so small that like they could yeah. actually hold a council meeting and then change the damn law. Yeah. So you got to watch out on that. What I do like about Airbnbs in the actual city of Cleveland itself is they've already legislated through that process. And now they're charging that 3% fee. Mm -hmm. So they've already like gone through. Right. They settled. And they've decided like, yeah, we're behind this and we want to make money. That's so cool. what I like, and that's going to get me into my second question I wanted to ask you about is I like uh, the new construction stuff uh, for Airbnbs, right? Because you get the really nice houses and then you get them in like the hipstery type areas and then you're close to downtown, so you're close to all the hospitals. Like that's where I think it makes the most sense. Plus, I don't know if you're aware or if you've seen content we've put out there about it or you just know because you're in the area, but you know there's a 15-year tax abatement for new mm -hmm. construction in Cleveland. I've, right seen, now. Your, I've seen your video, yeah. yeah. And that, that might be going away. Uh, I, I heard right. Bib was talking about potentially reevaluating that, right? So, uh, I we have stuff like that. We have Airbnbs in the suburbs, but just you know, if you want to buy an Airbnb in the suburbs, you just have to know like it's possible the rug can get pulled out from under you. Um, potentially, likely, I don't know. It's hard to tell, right? Because everything's in flux. But could like, have, yeah, definitely yeah. could happen. That's so, something you got to focus on. That, yeah. Hey, just so you know, we can rock gonna... it as an Airbnb for two years, and then boom, it's no longer allowed to be yeah. an Airbnb. Yeah. And, and and again, the idea of coming to you is like, like uh, I'll I'll let I'll I'll just leave this up to you and right. This is your business. Um. So yeah, I mean, I and and I've 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 seen that you that you like uh, Ohio City and Tremont and so so uh I, yeah, I'm just saying, just going into specifics in in the Cleveland area, just saying that I would be uh open to 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 doing that type of 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 properties, uh for for short term rentals. Uh, I'm, I'm not scared of that. And then, and then again, I, I think I, I, the only thing I would say is, is unless, unless we stick to like this, the West side, um, and, and, and again, maybe it's my, 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 uh, preconception is wrong about, uh, how hard it is to make money with single families. Um, uh, I mean, I just, those are probably my two things. I'm scared of single families and then, and then, uh, then the West side. And that's that's really all that I have. I don't have anything else. To... Okay. Well, for Airbnb, I gave. I think the single family is the way to go. But right. if we're talking like long term rental, and we're talking like yeah. West Side in Cleveland itself, mm -hmm. uh, you're right. My my thought. You touched on it. I like the triplex or the quad, preferably the quad. Because a lot of the triplexes in the market are actually just duplexes, where mm -hmm. like they converted it and it that, yeah. you can't do that. Like you can't, you can't take a duplex and convert it to a triplex right now. Right. It's like, sometimes it's grandfathered in. Sometimes it's like the city didn't even know. And I have seen them get shut down. Right. Uh, oh, really? Like new building codes, right. Require you to have two forms of egress coming out of that third unit. Okay. And uh, the, the way that the mm -hmm. cost of like actually doing it, like it's not cost prohibitive to actually do it correctly. So every once in a while you get the ones that have already like they were done like 50 years ago when the code was different and they're grandfathered in and it's kind of like a little bit of a gray area, but it's okay. Like those are okay, but like don't think you should buy a duplex to try to add a third unit. Mm -hmm. But the quads in the area are oftentimes built 
with the intent to be a quad, right? Especially mm-hmm. the row homes, right? They yeah. were built with that purpose. So yeah, I think that is if you're and you got a lot going on, right? So you kind of got to pick and choose your spots of what you do, right? Like you got some time devoted to the e-commerce, you got some stuff devoted uh, some stuff devoted to the flipping in North Carolina. And then if you're trying to just like pick your spots, if we're talking like, Hey, I'd like to hit up a good Airbnb. I'd recommend a newer expensive single family, right? In the city Mm -hmm. itself. If you want to continue to rock that for the long haul, uh, in a suburbs, we make good money, but know that the carpet could be pulled for you. If we're talking long-term rentals, I'm kind of with you. I don't really like think, that like all these colonials that are a hundred years old uh, on the West side of Cleveland are the best like long-term investment when you could do like a quad, I would do quads uh, Mm -hmm. because you're going to get a better price per unit uh, than you would for a single, right? Uh, About the same as you get for a double, but your financing is so much better than if you're trying to buy like a six unit, right? And buying a six unit, I think what a lot of people don't understand is like the financing on a six unit versus the financing on a four unit is like a lot worse. Yeah. It's a lot worse, but it's a lot worse for like several reasons. One, it's bad just because of the fact that it's a different kind of loan. It's now a commercial loan mm-hmm. uh, versus a 30 year residential. So you're not going to get a 30 year commercial loan. But the other thing is, I think like a lot of people, especially investors that come to me who've like seen me through the content I put out on like bigger pockets or like, you know, this channel, like, mm-hmm. A lot of people that are like kind of like students of real estate and they're kind of like learning it and and they're seeing what other promoters and what other people are putting out there. Uh, There's like this misconception, I think, uh, that when a lot of these new investors come out to buy these multifamily properties, that everything's going to be like cookie cutter, reports filed, like, you know, great cpa done paperwork and everything's going to be in order right and uh super sophisticated because that's the kind of stuff that you have to take to the lender to get the actual valuation on the property because we're working with Mm -hmm. debt, you know debt service coverage ratio here but brah so 200 million dollars in cleveland that ain't the seller of an apartment building right a seller of like a six unit apartment building is like some cat uh who half the money goes from tenant's hand to their hand to their pocket doesn't pay taxes on yeah. it like yeah. there's really no like you're never really running into that professional paperwork right so oftentimes getting loans on those those deals is almost like not it's going to be a non-starter right like a lot of the apartments i've bought right uh i've bought from like you know you got like older eastern european dudes that have been you know owning mm-hmm. these things for like 40 friggin' years and like there ain't no paper trail of anything, yeah. right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, you, you know, you got to understand that. But when you're doing a four unit, there doesn't have to be a paper Simple. trail, yeah. right? Because it's just based on your income, your debts, and you have great income and stuff from your other businesses, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, you could go and rock a beautiful loan on a four unit, and it don't matter what the seller did. Because I, I, think, I think people do oftentimes get, like, way too caught up in, like, how the seller before you ran the property versus like how the property should run uh, based on like, the proper management. Market. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Like the, the market. So for long term, yeah, I think for you, dude, it would make the most sense to do quads. And like if you're talking using those residential loans, right, you get 10, right? So obviously you want to keep one, possibly two, since you're, you guys are obviously very mobile, right? Mm-hmm. So you could like have your own personal homes. But like if you're yeah. only thinking like of adding like, five to seven mortgages i i and and it doesn't seem to me like you need to go from zero to a hundred and and be super aggressive immediately i would probably if i were you i'd sit out and wait for the right quads to come uh because those are just it's gonna allow you to finance the best get the most rental income checks coming in one of your fears was single family homes right you're kind of like oh Mm -hmm. if one thing goes wrong it's that's it that's the whole investment right it should never happen with a quad right one tenant's all screwed Mm -hmm. up you're always yep. going to be dealing with somebody being a dick. So if you're dealing with one person screwing up, you still got the other three bringing a rent. So for you, yeah, I, w- I would say that the quad would be the right thing to do, especially because you have so much other money coming in from the long haul. And like, if mm-hmm. you get the ones that are like the townhomes, like those will maintain yeah. the value uh, the most throughout, uh, you know, your entire type of ownership. Cause like, 
immediate cash flow from these, like spending money for you to live off of, I don't think should be number one on your priority list because you have other revenue mm-hmm. streams that are doing that for you, right? So I think yeah. when you're buying, you got to look for the long haul, right? Yeah, so this is long term. Th- yeah. This is long term portfolio. Th- yeah. yeah, absolutely. So I think yeah. those four unit buildings will hold their value the most for the long haul. And then another thing I want to touch on, right? Did you see? Uh, and are you familiar with the new lead laws and stuff? No, nope. Cleveland. Nope. Okay, so <clears throat> there are brand new lead laws, and I have a, a half hour video. So like, I, I won't talk to you for this. I won't mm. spend a half hour telling you I'll this. I'll check it out. Yeah, yeah. I, I explain this whole process. But in Cleveland now, every single two years, you have to get your home re lead certified. Okay. But these are brand new laws, and, and they rolled it out over the last two years uh, in varying zip codes at a time. So the final zip code, like the last one of all of these properties, mm-hmm. uh, is technically not due till the end of 2022, right? So in four months. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what you have to understand is right now, almost all the properties we're seeing being traded, being bought and sold, right, mm-hmm. are not lead certified properties right because it's not like uh the point of sale system in some of the suburbs where there's mm-hmm. like a report and like it's like a stop gap like the title company's not allowed to transfer title until buyer and seller agree to assume the violations or the seller fixes them there's yep. no stop gap there's no like alert no block that goes off with these lead uh certifications okay so what i'm seeing a lot of because it's brand new laws a lot of the buyers and sellers don't know about them uh, almost none of the realtors seem to know about them, right? So I'm seeing people buying duplexes that are not lead certified and they have, you know, they're just doing things business as usual. Mm-hmm. Like the lead paint disclosure just says, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. And uh, what ends up happening is if you then need to go to evict that tenant later, the city will not allow you to evict that tenant until you go through the lead process. And then if you watch that video, wow. you'll see the lead process is a very long and cumbersome process. So if you're paying attention to properties and you're looking at properties that are not lead certified, the two things you really got to pay attention to right now, dude, because uh, the majority of them are not going to be lead certified. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you can't just Way be like, oh, there. you got to get it lead certified or you got to tell me the lead bid because sellers aren't really going to do that. Again, you'd have yeah. to watch that video where I explained to you, but like, it's not like it's like, okay, no problem. And you get a lead bid tomorrow. Like it's like a multi-inspection, multi-government official process. Like it's, it's a lot, but the biggest things you got to see, dude, you got to pay attention to is if there's wood siding and if there's wood windows, right? Cause mm-hmm. you have to redo this stuff every two years. So essentially as we go now through, this is the first time in a hundred years that these properties are getting lead certified. Uh, if it's like wood siding, wood windows, you pretty much got to vinyl side it and the do change, the vinyl yeah, windows. change everything. Yep. So like, dude, we, we we've done, a, we've lead certified a lot of properties, right? And I've seen the bids vary from like two grand to like 70 grand. All right. Uh, on like four unit or less buildings, right? Like that's the, the gauge, right? But your 70 grand property, that's an outlier. That property is all jacked up, but like your bigger costs are going to be like, if you have to do the vinyl siding, right? Like you take like these, all these duplexes in Cleveland, right? These big colonial duplexes, like you're mm-hmm. looking at like 15 G's right to vinyl side one of those right now right so that's like a huge portion of your cost then all the windows a couple hundred bucks a window there's friggin' mm-hmm. a ton of them so those are like your two biggest costs so the cool thing is kind of circling back to what you already kind of like is a lot of those uh four unit row home buildings are brick so mm-hmm. that right there that like that's not a big deal right and then if you get a brick one with vinyl windows every two years when you got to re-get your house lead certified your, your pain points are really at that point, just going to be like, if there's peeling paint in the units or uh, you may have to like scrape and paint front porches, which are usually wood, uh, won't be a big deal. Right. So as you look to the long haul, uh, you'll definitely want to pay attention uh, to this new lead stuff. Cause that, that totally has changed the game. And, and the worst thing is when someone goes in thinking they're buying something the same way they were buying it four years ago, and then wham, they realize they got to do a $30,000 reno yeah, yeah. Yep. that they didn't build into their acquisition because the laws are brand new. And they're changing, right? Like the city's like going through and changing how they're doing it because, you know, they're rolling this out. It's like a living, breathing thing. It's happening in real time, right? So like uh, it's in flux how they're enforcing it and, and this or that. But 
pay that needs to be on your radar, brother. That is big. How will that how how will these law change after after the end of the year for for twenty twenty three? How will it change uh, the closings? Like if you don't have that certified, is that gonna go through? Is that gonna no? That's go what I'm saying, right? Okay, so like because <clears throat> the law is already passed. Okay, yeah, the law is already happened. It's not being enforced. Yeah, well, it is, but it, it like all right there. Let's just easy math. Let's say there's 20 zip codes in Cleveland, okay? Mm -hmm. So they passed this law, and, and they took, like, the 20 zip codes in Cleveland, and they're like, all right, these four zip codes, these houses need to be lead certified uh, by this date, and then these four by this date, these mm -hmm. four by this date, right? So now we're all the way at the end of it. The yeah. final date, like the last grouping, it is by the end of uh, 2022, Mm -hmm. So technically, there's still some that don't yet have to be lead certified, but they all will need to be lead mm -hmm. certified by that time. And the way that the city has been enforcing these thus far, and it, that's why it's different than the point of sale. There is no stop gap mm -hmm. uh, at the closing. So like, oh, gotcha. if you don't know any better, I could so, sell you a property that's not lead certified. You don't know the law exists. Your realtor doesn't know it exists. My realtor doesn't know it exists. And I could sell you a duplex that would normally sell for 100 k uh, but let's say it's like wood-sided wood windows, and then you buy it, all's cool, and then two months from now, your tenant's like, hey, Patricia, I ain't paying rent anymore, and you're like, all right, well, I got a Vicky dog because I watch Holden Wise TV, and that's what we do. So then you go to a Vic said tenant, and then the judge is like, that's no, what you find out, you, man, that, that's you never yeah. got your house led certified. You can't evict this person. So then you then got to go through the bidding process and you get the people out. And again, that'll be in the, the, the lead yeah. video I made. But then it's going to come out like, yo, bro, to lead certify this, you got a vinyl side this house. You got to do your windows. You got a thirty thousand dollar bill and you can't do nothing to that tenant until you do it. Yeah, people are in for a big surprise, and yeah, they're right. Find so out when they try to evict, yeah. So yeah, it's it's already out, and it's just right. like a slow roll of all the ones that are due. All right. So, it's so it should be on your radar, regardless. Yeah. And and it's not going to change in regards to there being an actual stopgap, uh, at title where like, unlike with the point of sale where those municipalities like actually will not allow the title company to transfer right. the title. Like so, it's on you to know. Mm -hmm that that will be required. They could right. also, in theory, uh, they will prevent you from registering your rental. All the rentals need to be mm -hmm. registered, okay? So in theory, if it's not lead certified, I, I believe they're not allowing you to register your rental. Um, and then you'll have an unregistered rental property, yeah. which in and of itself is also technically a misdemeanor crime. Uh, yes. So yes. I haven't yes. seen much of anything of like enforcement happening on that avenue though. Right now it's, because, you know, the city of Cleveland, they do have financial issues. So they're a little bit behind the eight ball on, on actually like enforcing mm. some of the stuff they're doing. Uh, but it, it, what I've seen thus far is, is it's everyone's kind of like scooting under the radar. Nothing's really happening to anybody until you have to do an eviction. And then they're just like, no, you can't evict the tenant until this happens. So you have All to right. pay attention to that. Know that when you go to buy a property, because say right. you're buying a deal and I'm not involved or something from what I'm seeing. There is like an above seventy five percent chance that the real a different re your realtor might not know the seller's mm -hmm. realtor might not know the seller nobody knows and yeah. then you can be the guy caught with the bag later. Got it. Yeah. All right. No, it's definitely yeah. And that's Good. Cleveland yeah. only. That does not affect the suburbs. Suburbs. Yeah. And that's going to be Cleveland properties built before seventy eight. So when we were talking about Airbnb. That's why I like the new it. ones for two right. reasons. One, you get the tax abatement. Two, you don't have to ever worry about lead certifying. How are you getting the Airbnb deals? Uh, are, are those in, in your show too? Or how, is, how are you uh, managing those? Key how are you promoting those properties? Oh, uh, yeah. We uh, I haven't sold any Airbnbs like on my investment oh. show. We're like Holton okay. Wise. Uh, we're selling it to you guys. But uh mm -hmm. My clients that have been interested in doing Airbnbs, we do it through the MLS show and uh, I'm going out there and I'm just like I do on that show, right? Like when I do the MLS show, it's like, you know, a guy like you, like, Hey dude, 
like for me and you, it'd be like, yo, I'm mm-hmm. interested in Airbnbs or I'm interested in quads. And then when I see one that I think makes sense for them, I then make them the personalized video. That's how we've done all of our Airbnbs for our clients. So it hasn't been something so, we're holding wise is promote it and right. sold it from our own inventory. Yeah, because I, I didn't think, yeah. yeah, I haven't seen any of those. You so, know, it's just so, stuff that I'm, I'm finding out there. And what I think works the best is like mm-hmm. uh, when you get like the, you know, the developers and stuff, because uh, when they, it's the developer, the actual builder that gets the tax abatement, but then it transfers to the buyer. Um, mm-hmm. And if they build them with green housing standards, they get the 15K tax abatement. Uh, so when we see ones like that, we like to scoop them up. Uh, and it's kind of, I think there'll be a little more opportunity now that the market is softened because of the interest rates, because like for a minute, like almost all through 2022, dude, it was like very, very hard to actually get an offer accepted because there are so many multiple offer situations now. But now with the Fed raising everybody's rates, uh, you know, I think you're seeing a little bit, those prices are coming down and we don't have as yeah. much competition from owner occupants to actually yeah. buy those. So, so, how, so, all right. So, uh, how do I go about, um, so two, two questions there, one about the financing and then the other one about like getting the deals. So, uh, you said you, you mentioned the MLS, the, the MLS show, right? So I I've seen like you saw like the packages of, of, uh, a number of, um, let me just pull pull your website here. So how do I how do I get get those go those personalized emails? Do I pay for the for the searches? Yeah, you pay you for like, the package. packages. Yeah, then... so like the process, you pay for the package, and uh, then I send you a questionnaire of like specifically mm-hmm. what you want to do. Uh, we're talking right now, so I kind of think I have an idea of what you want to do. And it's essentially like, say you buy 10 videos, right? And then mm. uh, I obviously am combing through the MLS every single day, all day. And then like when something pops up on the MLS that piques my attention, then I'm like, oh, okay. Like for you, right? Like guess based on where our conversation has gone, like if you had like a 10 pack, I'd be like, all right. So for Patricio, I'm keeping my eye out for two things. I'm keeping my eye out for uh, newer construction homes in Cleveland that I think will make him money as an Airbnb investment. Mm-hmm. And I'm also uh, paying attention to quads, preferably brick and townhome shape whenever those pop on the market. So then whenever one of those pops on the market, I see it, uh, I rip the show and then uh, we send it to you. It's private, the show's private. Uh, those shows don't, like when, when those shows are released on Holdenwise TV, they're usually mm-hmm. like, if you notice they don't get released Not numerically. Too yeah. Yeah. They're usually like six months, eight months old. Like, yeah. I don't know. I think we filmed episode like 2,124 earlier today. Uh, but like, if you look on the channel, like, I think like 1,400 just got publicly released. Right. So, like, you know, we're like almost a thousand shows uh, out than like that one. Right. Cause they stay hidden until like the property is no longer on the market. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that would be how that would. So, like, for me, I'd be looking if, if the guy, if you're like the plan that I think makes sense for you is to do, you know, mix up your money. Like when, a when the better quad brick quad townhome style quad comes up, mm-hmm. that'd be the kind of deals I'd, I'd want to try to have you buy that makes sense mm-hmm. to me. And then possibly these newer construction Airbnbs. And that's the thing, right? Those two strategies, like they're not gonna, like you can't take that new construction home and then put a section eight, 10 in there. That'd be a yeah. horrible idea. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And vice versa. You can't uh, try to run time. the Airbnb strategy on, on one of those quads. Yeah. It would also be a terrible idea. So if you're open to both strategies, I'd be looking yeah. for both of those. If you only like one of the strategies, we'd only be doing that. So like, you know, it, at that point, it would be like, you know, you you get the, we got to strike when the iron's hot, so to speak, right? So it's of course. Like, there's not just like 10 brick quads on the market at a given point in time. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah, kind of like one of those things you got to be ready to hit it when it's there. Yeah, so that takes me to my second to my second question. Well, so, so what do you, what do you suggest I get? Like the, is that the 10? I would um, say the 10 pack's the best because the 10 pack, you get the the lowest cost per video. Yes. I would say the 10 pack. And then from there, uh, Mm -hmm. it's just, you know, what, what you want me to focus on for you. And then like, you might get a video in four days. Cause I can, we film, that's all I, I do that four days a week. I film videos uh, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? I have a mm-hmm. whole list of all my clients, what their wants are. And every single you know morning I'm looking at the MLS and I fill out the day of shows, right? Mm-hmm. But like, it's not like, yo, you get a video from me every Thursday. You're going to get a video from me based upon when, what when, you want. When the property, becomes yeah, yeah, I understand. But the actual yeah. process of filming 
uh, I get it done and sent to you in 24 hours, right? So like everything I film on Monday, I have four editors in my studio here. Uh, so like if I film something for you Monday, uh, the video's done out of out of editing, out of production, and emailed to you by Tuesday. Tuesday. All right. So I'll I'll do that. And uh, so the thing the ten pack. So and we'll use that ten pack for both Airbnbs and 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 fourplex. Okay. Um, and then. And then that thing takes me to my second question. If I'm going to be using uh, residential uh, residential loan, uh, it's just a matter of having what like a, so. Can I secure can I like secure the property with a with a deposit or do I need like a, a letter of approval letter of approval? Yeah, you uh, want to get a pre approval letter from your lender. So uh, I need to just be re, re, you know it, it lasts how much how long does it last like thirty days sixty days no. <laughs> Well, that that's a little overblown. Like, if you're looking at like the minute details, right? Like, so my question is, should I be just renewing that? No, or you, just you just need one. one. We're good, right? Like, there's like there's no like uh, like law or set process like in real estate in regards to the pre approval. Like, everybody's going to do their own level of due diligence on you when you submit an offer, right? Like, sometimes mm -hmm. we'll be working with an agent on the other side that is very good at their job. Sometimes we'll be working with an agent on the other side who's a complete idiot, right? But like, I'm very good at my job. So I'll tell you what I'm doing. Like when I am on the seller side, right? Like mm -hmm. what I'm doing, right? Like we have a property on the market. You're a buyer. Nobody gets paid until you close it. So I'm trying to size you up. I'm like, all right, this guy wants something of extreme value from us. He wants us to remove our property from the market, to take mm -hmm. our property away so no other buyers can try to give us money. So for us to do that from the seller side, I'm sizing you up like, what is this guy's probability of closing the sale, yeah. right? So like, I size up buyers all day, right? So for my conversation with you, and I'd be able to present this while I'm working for you, I'd be able to present this to a seller you're going to be a pretty solid buyer. So I wouldn't like worry uh, too much no. what you'd want to do. And I have lenders. If you don't already have a lender, but if you have a lender you already yeah. work with, you just get a pre-approval, get it for the maximum he's willing to offer you. Right. right. It's like, if you're doing quads, we're going to be looking at properties in the 200 uh, to like 300, maybe 350 price range. So you'd probably want to get a pre-approval letter, just one pre-approval letter that says like 350. Right. And you don't need to like, get a new one every time we look at a, a particular property yeah. every once in a while you run into an agent's like i want one specific for this property but at that point they're either confused or they're just like maybe not confident that you have the ability to close so then at that point it'd be my job to advocate for you be like hey look i've been right. working with this guy for a while he's committed he's yeah. solid he's and paid this much money uh to work thus far on this property he's got and that's what I, and that's and I why i'm asking you as because a solid buyer I got a I got a little of a little approval from a uh, one of those like online uh, mortgage lenders like national lender because uh, I was looking at a, at a house here in Bay and uh, and the, so it got uh, it was something like for one point two or something and the realtor this was from for, from Howard Hanna the realtor was like no no let's not use that one and it, it, this was probably months ago when everybody 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 was bidding. Uh, sight unseen and sight unseen and and cash, but she was like, no, let's use a local lender. So she sent me to their the Howard Hanna's lenders, the one they use, like a, a local bank here. <laughs> well, uh, well Howard Hanna, Howard Hanna's lenders, Howard Hanna. So well, she gets well, she, a little she bit gave of me, She gave me, she gave me <laughs> them and also a couple of options. So my question was like, is there any like any lender, local lender, national lender? Does yeah, like, it matter? All right, like Does all right, it... like just like because there's like so many like. Like you get people that like will get stuff from like do hard money or some random like mm -hmm. commercial type lender. Like the other day, I had this property listed for thirty four thousand nine hundred, and uh, these two girls were the, the buyer's agents. They submitted an offer to me for thirty four thousand nine hundred, uh, and it was going to be like with a hard money loan. And they give me this like online lender that says so and so is approved for five million dollars. Like, what the fuck is this? Like, this motherfucker. I'm like, show me a screenshot of this guy's bank account. Yeah, exactly. Because you're looking at some fucking dipshit property in the ghetto. For three... Like, this motherfucker, I could tell within three minutes that those chicks have never worked with that lender. It's yeah. a non-legitimate lender. And this guy's got no scenario of actually closing the deal. So, for yeah, me, my job protecting my seller 
is to make sure we don't remove our property off the market for some guy who's not going to get for, past yeah, finish. Yeah, I understand. So that's garbage. But like for you, right? Like uh, it doesn't have to be a local lender, but like Wells Fargo, is for better? example, right? All right. Like uh, they're almost in every state, and like that's like a legitimate lender. And like so, if you All had right. a three hundred fifty thousand dollar pre-approval letter from Wells Fargo. No one's going to give us any issues. And if they do, I'll be able to advocate for you. Or like right. uh, PNC Bank, right? It's a regional bank. So it doesn't have right. to be just this like little specific, like this town only bank. Just like, you know, I'm just trying to think of like the bigger banks people know. But like Wells Fargo, definitely PNC, uh, you know, one of those yeah. kind of banks. And, and, and I, got one, one. I got the one from, I don't know which one it was. I don't know if you've seen the sense of one of those like local, regional, but or like uh, Key I mean, Bank, yeah. right? Something exactly. like that. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Um, and then sometimes they say like on the bottom, like, oh, this is good for 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days. Like if, if we're like Being three was, months yeah. from now and I give mm -hmm. somebody one that's like 96 days old, I don't think they're going to give us uh -huh. any issues. But like, right. conversely, you don't want to like have got pre approved in 2019 and then we're trying to use that pre approval letter in 2022. You know what I'm saying? All right. Yeah, um, I would I, I would get one if when on so I mean if, even Howard Hanna's lender, by the way, more. it's not a bad lender. I mean, they would be fine too. All right. I just you know, obviously that's gonna be the first one they refer. I mean, I'd do the same goddamn thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna exactly. I'm gonna I'm gonna look up I'm gonna look up the last one I got. I'll send it to you. And if you think it needs I need to get an, an, a new one, we'll just get another one. Yeah, and then from there. Like, say we see, like, four quads throughout the course of, like, a six-month period. We would just be using mm -hmm. the same one every time. Right. And then if somebody gives me flack on it where they're, you know, they have caution that you'll be able to actually close the deal. Mm -hmm. And I can't uh, talk to them without intervention from you to get them to think you will close the deal. Maybe they want something else from you and say, hey, so-and-so right. uh, would like you to reach out to the lender and uh, just get this updated or something right. along those lines, right? Sounds good. No yeah, big deal. It's really right, just man. people sizing you up to seeing if you're going to close. Because that, that, a lot of people don't understand this, Patricio, but like I sell a lot of property, but like it's like basically screening for tenants, right? Like the biggest part of a property manager's job isn't to find someone to live in the house because we can only find one person to live in your one house, right? It's mm -hmm. actually to keep many people out, right? So for like every unit I'm renting, my the bigger part of my job is like there's like 30 people that want to live there that is not good for you so my job is to you know make sure 30 people don't get in the door and only let that one person in right so it's the same when we're selling property dude so like every property we sell a large portion of our job is like just sizing people up and like this guy is just gonna waste time he's not gonna close because like it's like mm -hmm. an epidemic of like people not closing and everybody, you know, they watch this podcast or that and they hear about wholesaling or they hear about this, they hear about that. And everybody gets all these crazy ideas and Hey man, fake it till you make it. I get it. But like, you know, that's great. But if my job is to represent my seller, it's, you know, essentially going to be the pressure be with those. Yeah. If your sure. dream is like a, a pipe dream, my job is to destroy your pipe dream. <laughs> and that's just <laughs> how it is. Right. So, yeah. Uh, but it. where you're at, you, you, your, your finances and stuff, we're not going to have those issues and I wouldn't sugarcoat it. Like, cause I do these same calls with guys that do have pipe dreams. And I explain like, Hey, you know, we could try to do this, but just so you know, like, you know, if you're trying to, you know, work this particular strategy with me and we're trying to get your offer accepted, I'll be honest with you. You need to buy a hundred videos because we're going to get told <laughs> no 99% of the time. And that's why I charge up front. So I was like, Hey, we'll continue to work, but like, I don't work for free. So like, bro, you're, you're a one in a hundred shot. I'll work with you a hundred times if I get a hundred paychecks, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. you know, I would shoot it to you straight, but your finances will be fine. All right. Cool, man. Uh, all right. I'll get the, sounds good. I'll get the, um, the, the, the 10 pack and uh, let's get, get these rolling. All right. Perfect. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll still send you the questionnaire. Obviously yeah. I have this conversation, but yeah, still, still have definitely. you go through the questionnaire. So I know exactly uh, what to target for you. And then there'll be some more back and forth communication uh, between us and you uh, just on the exact logistics of everything. And uh, yeah, that's what we'll start focusing on. All right. All right. Sounds good. All right, brother. Good right, talking to you. See ya. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.